Hi everyone, welcome to this course. This course deals with machine learning or practical machine learning. And instead of me writing an introduction to the course, I thought I'd ask a machine learning system to generate that text. So ask a machine learning, a computer to be creative. Uh, and in this case, I'm using ChatGPT3 and let's see how that works. So I'm gonna ask it to write a fun, exciting introduction script. Uh, for an introductory course on machine learning. Let's see how it does. Welcome to our introductory course on machine learning. Are you ready to dive into the exciting world of machine learning? In this course, we will be exploring the fundamentals of this transformative technology, which is changing the way we analyze and understand data. You learn about the different types of machine learning and how they can be used to solve real world problems. You'll also get hands-on experience building your own machine learning models and see how they can be applied to a variety of scenarios. Whether you're a beginner looking to get started in the field of machine learning or a seasoned professional, looking to deepen your knowledge, this course has something for everyone. So let's get started, get ready to enter the amazing world of machine learning and see it, how it can help you make sense of the vast and complex data that surrounds us. Hmm, that generates a better <laughs> introduction than I could do. Uh, in this course, we'll be working in writing Python scripts. Uh, let's ask this chat GPT to write us a Python script, write whoop, function that uh, computes the all right let's see if that works so now we're asking a program to generate code Cool, and we even have a button here where we can copy the code. Well, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so this is generative AI. We are asking a program to generate something novel. Let's try it in a different domain. Let's go to Dolly here. Let me log in to Google. And this generates pictures. Let me say I want a photo between a standard poodle. So it's generating photos of what I asked it to do. And if we if I asked the same thing again, it would generate brand new photos. But here's it, its example. And some are better than others, but they do look like a cross between a poodle and a horse. Let's try something else here. Let's say I want a watercolor painting of um let's try pueblo skyscraper i'm not good at coming up with ideas here so uh that's the best i could think of and those all look pretty good so those are unique pictures it drew for watercolors and kind of a watercolor style of what a pueblo skyscraper might look like so again, this is generative AI or generative machine learning. Generative AI has been in the news lately in the last few months, and particularly ChatGPT. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of ChatGPT. People are concerned that students are going to use it from grade school on up to cheat in some way, to just have, if you have a series of questions, just ask ChatGPT if you need to write an essay. So let's take a look at the news here. So New York Times says a lot. How to use chat GPT and still be a good person. Could change the world. Can we trust them? And here in the Washington Post, they're alert on for inevitable cheating after release of chat GPT. And here's how teachers can foil chat GPT handwritten essays. So you can see this is a problem, not just writing text, but in writing code. How can you be sure that 
um, the student actually wrote the code and learned something. And although GitHub has detected that its code generator is actually generating code that is already copyrighted, uh, so that's problematic. This is a form of machine learning. Um, there's generative machine learning, and for the most of the course, we'll be looking at what's called analytical machine learning. In that case, we analyze something, obviously, from the name. So we might want to analyze images and say, is this a picture of a cat or a dog? Or analyze images of people walking into some place and seeing if we can identify who they are. Uh, analytical machine learning is also used in self-driving cars. We have a lot of input there from sensors, including images, and we're building a system that will drive this car. We might want a system that looks at emails and to identify whether they're spam or not, or look at tweets and say, are these tweets a kind of positive about a particular topic or negative? These are all forms of analytical machine learning. Generative machine learning are things we've just seen in the last few minutes. We can generate novel text, like ChatGPT, we can generate code, same program. We can generate images like Dolly does and videos or music. It's just creative, right? It's creating something new in the world instead of analyzing stuff. Now, while these systems may sound incredible or magical, if you kind of dive into them, they're just based on simple, well, moderately simple mathematics, right? They're fundamentally having to do with math. And how these systems work is that we have tons and tons of data. We give this system tons and tons of data, and it learns from that data. We might s scrape the web for eight years, so we get an entire contents of the web. That would be around 410 billion words. That's 45 terabytes of data. And we give it to this blank generative model, and it churns through there, and it tries to learn stuff. Some associations between words, what are good sentences, not so good sentences that you don't see that much, how are these sentences constructed and related to different topics. And once it builds that model, it can generate novel text. Welcome to a fun course on learning to play the guitar or whatever. Same thing with generating new images. We give it tons and tons of images. It learns from these images. These are pictures of watercolors. These are photo picture, photographs that are taken in the real world. And it can generate models of these and generate new ones. And as you can imagine, a system that can do that can take 45 terabytes of data and generate and process this and generate some sort of model. It must be a pretty powerful machine that does that. And OpenAI, the system that developed ChatGPT in this DALI photo program, say their system developed with my, by Microsoft, it would actually rank as one of the top five supercomputers in the world. It has 285 CPU cores and 10,000 GPUs. Of course, in this course, we're not going to be using <laughs> a system quite as powerful as that. We just don't have the big bucks to do it. But we'll be using a system that's a little bit more powerful than your laptop or than most people's laptops. And we'll see that in the next video. So see you then. Bye.